pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice. These are the Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, 1986 cartoon explored. The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers might have slipped your attention, even if you were there during the 1980s. The series took inspiration from a wide variety of westerns and science fiction films for one spectacular season in 1986. Given that the iconic Tom Cruise movie released only a few months before, there are also surprisingly many references to Top Gun. We are taking a long look back at the weird ideas, peculiar cast, and catchy theme song of Galaxy Rangers in our most recent video posted on our channel today. But really, our new jam is No Guts, No Glory by Johnny Vancouver. The show's opening sequence did an excellent job setting the stage. In 2086, aliens visited Earth to give humans sophisticated interplanetary technology in return for their safety from the Crown Empire. The series' main character was Zachary Fox, the commander of the Galaxy Rangers. Accompanied by Walter Doc Hartford, Shane Goose Gooseman, and Nico, a female ranger who did not fit the stereotype of a damsel in distress from the 1980s. Together, they engaged in activities you may have seen in a western, but with the addition of robots, such as riding robot horses and going to robot casinos. Although Galaxy Rangers featured a toy line, unlike many other 1980s animated series, the show did not seem to exist just to promote products. Although only 65 episodes were ever made, it was an outstanding series. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. It's a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Go, Elmo. What the cartoon television series is all about. The voiceover that introduces the series essentially lays out its plot. The Galaxy Rangers, which include bionically augmented Zachary Fox, super soldier Shane Gooseman, clairvoyant Nico, and swashbuckling computer whiz Walter Hartford, are the protagonists of this intergalactic sci-fi western. Additionally, each of them has a cutting-edge piece of technology known as Series 5 Brain Implant, which has enhanced their inherent skills. Along with other dangers to people who've explored the farthest reaches of space, they battle the terrible Crown Empire. In the middle of the 1980s, this animated series introduced the essence of anime to American television and distinguished itself from other cartoons by offering more to the midday viewing population. Fans of animated science fiction should look into this show since it combines Western and sci-fi themes with a lighthearted story that appeals to audiences of all ages. Midway through the 1980s, a ton of animated shows competed for the attention of younger audiences. Product placement was permitted when the rules for children's television were loosened earlier in the decade, which sparked a boom in animated series based on toy franchises like the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the Transformers, G.I. Joe, and others. In 1986, the Galaxy Rangers entered the fray, but it sought to accomplish more than just promote toys and provide a neat, tidy lesson at the conclusion of each episode. This is what The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers made its afternoon television debut with. It was much more of a science fiction adventure with storylines that took it to another level and were enjoyable for both adults and children. Additionally, the animation was superior to the typical afternoon entry of the time, approaching the aesthetic appeal of anime. Plus, the blend of Western, science fiction, and noir themes gave this show a distinctive atmosphere. The Galaxy Rangers has been essentially a light-hearted science fiction adventure that provided plenty of compelling genre stories. The show featured a very rich cosmos of realms and races to base its plots, and the personalities had better growth than the standard animated series at that time. In addition, it was imaginative and didn't take itself too seriously. Also, the beginning theme tune from the 1980s, No Guts, No Glory, quickly sticks in your brain. Even though it occasionally lapsed into copy and paste, it managed to outperform the majority of the midday television competition. Sadly, the series has not been acknowledged as the genre gem it actually is, and it is not readily available to go back and rewatch. Those who did see it during its original run have great recollections of the show. The series ran for a significant 65 episodes, which was about average for an animated TV show at the time, but it was canceled soon after it premiered. This was due to the fact that it debuted in an era when the animation business was oversaturated and lacked the product sales to remain competitive. The animated series that fared the best at those moments were the series that were consistently raking in toy sales, and the Galaxy Rangers show did not have its own toy line. The show at least had a complete initial run, 
possibly more episodes could have been produced if it had attracted more viewers. Sadly, the concert did not have a lengthy encore run, which caused it to get forgotten. If fresh actors voiced the original characters, this show might resume where it left off. Alternately, a follow-up series that honors the original squad while introducing new Galaxy Rangers might be created. Even though there may not be much nostalgia for the 1980 series, there would still be a market for it today. The anime entries, Detective Conan, Lupin III, Magic Knight Ray Earth, and The Monster Rancher were all animated by the Japanese company Tokyo Movie Shinsha. Batman the Animated Series, The Real Ghostbusters, Spider-Man the Animated Series, and The Animaniacs, among others, would be produced by that company in the future, with an eye on the American market. Although there were just four episodes in each volume, and I think only four in total were issued, the series did receive a limited DVD release. A few individual episodes were also published on VHS, but both those formats are now out of print and selling for a premium on online marketplaces. Only 16 episodes of the series are included with the VOD purchase. On YouTube, the complete series is presently accessible for free, albeit with advertisements. But the video is of poor quality and is not an authorized release. Main characters of the cartoon series. The captain of the Rangers Series 5 is Zachary Fox. His whole left flank is rebuilt with bionics, granting him superhuman strength and enabling him to shoot energy blasts with his left hand. The implant's sole purpose in Captain Zachary Fox's life is to serve as an energy source. Pressing the badge triggers a series of occurrences that turbocharge his left flank cybernetic implants and facilitate either bolstering up the myomere tendons and muscles or channeling of the bioelectrical power generation through the bioengineered amplifiers to yield an energy discharge that could be so powerful as 16 conventional carbine shots, making him competent enough to blow a wall off, spot weld circuit elements, or conceivably pound through a yacht's hull. He is married and has two children. The Queen of the Crown took his wife's consciousness and housed it within a psycho crystal. Seasoned performer Jerry Orbach voiced Fox as a fragment of a federal congenital experiment to develop a core of improved mutant troops known as Super Troopers. Shane Goose Gooseman was biologically created in a test tube. The Super Troopers were given a gas by a civilian advisor to hasten their modification and increase their strength, but it also made them more violent and unstable emotionally. Goose, who was at a shooting range then, and managed to evade the gas, ended up being the only trooper who was still unarmed. Some of the other warriors managed to flee the cryogenetically frozen jail. Goose was offered the choice to evade cryogenic chilling, but only if he agreed to unite with the Galaxy Rangers and find the super troopers who had fled. The Series 5 cybernetic implants give him restricted control over the molecules in his body, enabling him to recover, soak energy, and adjust to different environments by momentarily changing the structure of his physique to suit the circumstance. Goose's implant boosts his innate bio defenses, allowing them to respond very quickly instead of taking minutes or even more as is typical. He is now almost on par with the rebel super troopers and is the singular one qualified to engage them in close quarters battle. Clint Eastwood greatly influenced his persona. As stated in the show's laurels, Goose seems to be the sole super trooper with kindness. Nico is a psychically gifted archeologist who specializes in prehistoric societies. She is skilled in martial arts and carries a big gun. She possesses foresight and the ability to move items and construct shields, thanks to the Series 5 implant. This shield can stop all attacks, although it cannot be kept up for very long. The radiation from Nico's implant is transformed into a telepathic boost that extends her psychic range from essential touch to several light years away, amplifying her natural psychic talents. She could also create an ambient energy barrier significantly depleting her implant. She and Goose have a romantic fling that lasts the entire season. Ariel discovered her from the safe haven world of Xanadu after her colony was destroyed. Nico was born in the doomed colony world of Aspeth and moved to her latest home, where she was brought up and her supernatural powers were developed. She was recruited by the Galaxy Rangers when she turned 19 and was ready to go back to her people in Xanadu. She was approved for the pilot Series 5 project after she graduated from the Institute. As a result of the numerous missions the Rangers of the Series 5 undertook that involved unfamiliar cultures and diverse belief systems, she was subsequently assigned to them as their mystical and archaeology specialist. Swashbuckling figure Walter Doc Hartford uses his fists, a sword, and a rifle to combat. He is an expert in computers and 
together with beta researcher Q-Ball, is in charge of much of the robotic processes which the Galaxy Rangers employ on a regular basis. The Series 5 implants give him the ability to interact with and command specialized software packages known as tweakers, which can take the form of airborne, three-dimensional, computer-animated angular objects. The consequences of Ranger Hartford's graft are the strangest, and they even have no adequate explanation. Only Commander Walsh explained it the best when he said, Doc Hartford, your implant makes you a computer wizard, able to conjure fantastic programs. Doc travels with a computer distinct unit, a portable computer with sophisticated diagnostic and maintenance features, as well as the capacity to connect to sensors and other computers. The CDU serves as both a center for Doc's graft power and a repository for the tweakers, Tripwire, Pixel, Pathfinder, Firefly, Lifeline, and Searchlight. His tweaker computer programs, which are an integral part of his psyche, are capable of doing things that no other virus, worm, or computer program could. His implant allows him to verbally command his tweakers, who allow Doc to control any computer technique. Born to wealthy parents, Hartford, a native of the Isle of Jamaica, received a private education that culminated at Mrs. Abercrombie's finishing school and charm. After successfully registering with a few biochemical businesses to assist him in creating better computer projects, he saw that his talents were not being tested much, so he left and joined the Ranger Corps. The Cartoon Cast The Galaxy Rangers had terrific casting in respect to that time. Jerry Orbach played the role of Zachary Fox, who led the Rangers of Series 5. Bobby Batone played the role of Brappo. Laura Dean played the part of Eliza Fox, while Doug Priest played the amusing role of Bubblehead, the memory bird. Hubert Kelly played Walter Doc Hartford. Earl Hammond played Captain Kidd, and Corinne Orr played the role of Kiwi Kids. Henry Mandel played the intriguing character of Crown Agent, and Maya Danziger played Annie O. Ray Owens played the role of Macross, Sandy Marshall played Buzzwang, and Lucy Martin played the uncredited role of Darkstar. What to expect from the first episode? The opening narration of the series sets the mood right at the start. In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies. Courageous pioneers, committed to the highest ideals of justice, and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. To elaborate the opening narration well, I have tried to simplify the meaning behind it for you, which says, the Crown Empire, which is an intergalactic dictatorship led by the despotic Queen of the Crown, is endangering various worlds, which the gentle aliens represent. With the help of the hyperdrive, Earth starts to communicate with other planets and colonize far-off worlds, creating a society that reflects a futuristic Wild West. Unfortunately, it also increases the risk of encountering space-dwelling bandits and the Crown Empire that aims to subjugate any species it comes across, especially humans. To defend Earth against these dangers, the crime-fighting agency, Beta, also known as the Bureau of Extraterrestrial Affairs, is established. The Galaxy Rangers, a group of four courageous space cowboys, one is actually a cowgirl, with unique abilities, thanks to Series 5 brain implants, are Beta's most well-known operatives. The Rangers are the Transdimensional Cowboy Police, Shane Gooseman, the Psychic Action Girl, Nico, the Cyborg Squad Commander, Zachary Fox, and the wisecracking cyber whiz, Walter Doc Hartford. The episode opens with the standard plot, where obnoxiously adorable aliens ask for assistance from humans and, in return, offer a faster-than-light drive. Like all of us, Earth, too, finds this wonderful and begins investigating. Zachary Fox is given the task of observing a tiny population of people who already have settled on the planet called Kerwin. In order to defend Kerwin from extraterrestrial invasions, the people of Kerwin are developing a planetary force shield alongside Andorians and Kiwi, Zozo and Waldo, Two extraterrestrial ambassadors accompany Zachary to Kerwin. Eliza, Captain Fox's wife, and both their kids also journey with them. Their spacecraft, the Phoenix, is taken hostage by an extraterrestrial criminal starship piloted by Captain Kidd while it is in space. Captain Kidd keeps the prisoners in return for a bounty from the Queen of the Crown, the ruler of the Intergalactic Kingdom. She desires human subjects for the Psycho-Crystal Trials in order to produce slave masters. Zachary, along with his children, is helped to flee by Zozo and Waldo, 
but Zachary sustains injuries, and Eliza is taken by none other than Captain Kidd, and the Phoenix gets ruined as well. Zachary is sent to Earth and given a bionic body reconstruction at the Beta, also known as the Bureau of Extraterrestrial Affairs Headquarters. A digital chip is also implanted in Zachary's brain. Zachary and Commander Walsh concur that Beta requires a specialized squad of the Galaxy Rangers, having unique skills to combat the extraterrestrial invaders. To improve each of the Galaxy Rangers' unique skills, they each get a Series 5 graft, an experimental computer implant. Zachary swears to save his wife from the Queen. Essentially, this series follows Jerry Orbach as he travels across space on a mechanical horse while wearing a cowboy hat and a robotic arm. However, it does a good job of laying out the basic idea in a concise manner, and it introduces a really memorable theme song. Three out of the four key protagonists are not actually present in the first episode. The audience won't know who the handsome black man, the long-haired psychic lady, or the youthful Clint Eastwood are for a while, though. Eventually, the man with the prosthetic arm is introduced. A few ideas are swiftly offered to us. The Kiwi is an absurdly adorable race that enjoys growing things. The Andorians, who have black, pupilless eyes and resemble slightly sanctimonious elderly folks, Waldo and Zozo, the two ambassadors, are Andorian and Kiwi, respectively. The Kiwi are cultivating enough food to supply the whole League of Planets, or Kirawan, a shielded planet that is crucial for the League of Planets. The unusual reality that no endeavor is made to explain the show's genuinely puzzling Old West tune catches on the inexperienced viewer immediately, even before the powerful Galaxy Rangers opening song has nearly finished. The compulsory expository voiceover in the title tune provides a brief synopsis of the program's main idea. They do have the name Rangers, which conjures up memories of, for instance, Texas Rangers. But it was also soon realized that the basis of Marshall Bravestar, another illustrated space cowboy from the same period as Galaxy Rangers, as well as Joss Whedon's Firefly, was a fusion of the sci-fi and western genres. It may be a little surprising initially that the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers also had a similar Cowboys and Spaceships premise, because the opening scene of each episode is just a big, jerky orgy of science fiction imagery, including lasers, spaceships, alien life forms, and vast, empty stretches of space. Then, when our narrator reveals some of the heroes we've put together, this valiant group of technologically advanced cowpokes burst onto the scene on mechanical horses. The pilot episode, features a creepy, superficially endearing character named Zozo of the species Kiwi, who looks like a purple Dobby with a terrible brunette wig and unnerving lidless tangerine orbs for eyes. He seems to be intended to be the Orko of this universe, a charming, funny mascot created to cater to the younger audience members. Keep in mind that I had already formed this sad bargaining chip during the episode's opening scene. I'll say it again, since perhaps only another 1980s kid can really understand what I'm saying here. I was forced to concede to myself about the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers being considerably superior to such mainstays as He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the Transformers, and G.I. Joe. But for you laypeople, this is a significant revelation. While the Transformers cannot make the same claim, the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers features animation that, despite occasional hiccups, would typically not seem out of order in terms of quality in the midday cartoon listings of 2008. In contrast to Galaxy Rangers, the same cannot be true for Masters of the Universe, where the individuals are not replaceable gimmicks, with characterization being replaced by gimmickry. Finally, in contrast to G.I. Joe, Galaxy Rangers comes through as an accurate serial tale instead of a collection of protracted product ads because it is so audacious and self-assured. I almost added that Galaxy Rangers never really owned a toy line in order to sustain, but I decided against it. Zozo is undoubtedly a contender for the title of most bizarre character. Still, Captain Kidd, a relatively standard pirate villain with a disfigured bird's head, who is unsurprisingly concerned with getting plunder, cough, could also be mentioned. Oh, and Captain Kidd's shoulder is home to an exasperatingly bizarre monkey creature that resembles Monchichi rather than a parrot. Wikipedia says that the brain implant of the Series 5 is likely the closest humankind will ever come to replicating telemechanics, the talents that gene biologists can extract from the human DNA. Owing to its remarkable transformation of biomechanical power produced by alpha rays and contained within the Galaxy Rangers badges, the S5 implant permits a significant amplification of natural skills. As somebody who lately watched an epic G.I. Joe fable 
where the heroes annihilated Cobra's doomsday apparatus by yodeling, I surely can attest that although it is at its corniest, The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers is far more intriguing, credible, and moody than any of its 80s era rivals. Admittedly, some of the dialogue is pretty silly. Their life force will be mine. It is quite mind-blowing stuff, given that it dates back to the time when Prince Adam would brandish a sword and exclaim, by the power of Grayskull, to transform into He-Man. One is left to wonder how the show failed to draw a crowd. Was it overly ambitious for the minimum requirements of the day, or is it just too dim? This series contained fatalities in the 1980s. Deaths were often frowned upon in children's literature. Was it overly analytical, or are young people simply better at taking such oddities at nominal value than elderly dupes like myself who stumble around? The sound design in The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers is clumsy and uneven at best. It is an unexpected, extraordinarily bold, and artistic children's animation from a couple decades ago, but it is still a children's animation that is outdated for now. It is possible that this is due to the animation's primary foreign production, Batman, along with his foes in Japan's latest Gotham Knights saga, suffered from equally awkward speaking and banter. Galaxy Ranger speech, while somewhat stiff as mentioned above, is also occasionally extraordinarily cognizant and sardonic, subverting the show's dramatic action situations in a funny manner. This makes it all the more unpleasant. The hit and miss nature of the episodes is to be expected. The episode, One Million Emotions, in which the Galaxy Rangers visit an astronomical art display and a sensation doll being robbed by some pirate types is undoubtedly a highlight. The episode starts with a tremendous throwaway joke. Nico introduces a series of paintings to Ranger Walter, thereby telling him that it is from Alaska, and Walter replies, the planet or the state. With that nice joke out of the way, One Million Emotions is more provocative than hilarious. For instance, the sensation doll, created by beings known as the Poe Mutants, or as Shane Gooseman refers to them as the Edgar Allan Poe Mutants, is frequently compared to an emotional electric chair. The Sensation Doll is described as an energy storage system. It retains 1 million sentiments, 100,000 varieties of fear, 25,000 variants of jealousy, anger, and love. An individual is made to feel the Sensation Doll in an early scene, and his ensuing scream is genuinely scary. Among the various antagonists responsible for the Sensation Doll's theft, one of them goes by the distinctive name of Jackie Subtract, one of numerous unexpectedly fantastic tiny bits that litter the whole series. Then there's the Psycho Crypt, a horrible acid experience of a chapter, wherein Zachary Fox has terrors about his unconscious wife, Eliza, that make him see things. Incidentally, Fox's motives for each journey in the show is to save her life. When his comrades and the authorities reject his choice to act against the ruthless and cunning Queen of the Crown, he even goes so far as to quit the squad. Disgusted, he abandons the Rangers and assumes the character of the solitary vigilante. The fact that Fox's fellow Rangers actually assist in carrying out his unlawful mission may not come as a surprise to you. Still, the episode's driven, aggressive, and occasionally irreverent tone certainly does. In the end, even though I can't appreciate the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers adequately in reference to children's animated entertainment from the 1980s, I'm especially smacked by the show's use of crude but innovative and masterful CGI. Yet, I found my concentration wandering whenever I tried to be seated all throughout a given episode. I would become excited when Zachary Fox or Shane Gooseman activated their bionic implants, much like a toddler, to request a theme song attack. No guts, no glory. Despite all of its improvements, the series may even be derivative. Even with all of its flaws, The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers authors had a lot of courage, and it seems terrible that their work was not given the credit it deserved. The future for the Galaxy Rangers. Now the question arrives, whether the Galaxy Rangers should be rebooted or not. Well, to answer that, I feel absolutely yes. Undoubtedly it should be rebooted, but more of a resurrection than a reboot. If fresh actors voice the original characters, this show might resume where it left off. Alternately, a follow-up series that honors the original squad while introducing new Galaxy Rangers might be created. Even while there may not be much nostalgia for the 1980s series, there would still be a market for it in the present. No Guts, No Glory the first of the three cartoon space western shows to premiere in America in the late 1980s, 
was this widely praised 1986 show. Galaxy Rangers had gained a surprising level of respect from older fans, especially considering that it was an animated series aimed at children from the 1980s and included a breakdancing robot. Due to the participation of TMS Entertainment and the grandiose plots, the show had an anime-esque vibe that few of its rivals could match. It was refined for an American cartoon series of the period. It seems to have a strong following even today. In the late 1990s, Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders was another project by the series creator, Robert Mandel. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Stop them.